and I am upset about what happened last night. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times the viewership. Trump-Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question, go. So you might want to take care of your family first. Leave my daughter out of your voice. Else, you know, don't, don't. Here's the truth. You're just the easy gone. answer. Hey folks, welcome to One and Done. I'm George and we have a great video lined up for you today. But before we dive in, make sure you like the video, share the video, smash the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on any of our videos. We must get into this. Vivek Ramaswamy blew up in the third and latest GOP debate in Florida. Vivek came out swinging like Tyson. No jabs, just pinpoint haymakers. The first to hit the canvas was the GOP, then the RNC and Ronna McDaniel. He went inside on NBC and then finished them with a beautiful uppercut. You better hide the kids, put the puppies outside, because this is about to go down. I think there's something deeper going on in the Republican Party here, and I am upset about what happened last night. We've become a party of losers at the end of the day. There's a cancer in the Republican establishment. Let's speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020. 2022, no red wave that never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my, yield my time to you. And frankly, look, the people there are cheering for losing in the Republican Party. Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party. You think the Democrats, I and mean, we've got Christian Welker here, you think the Democrats would actually hire Greg Gutfeld to host a Democratic debate? They wouldn't do it. And so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Christian, I'm going to use this time because this is actually about you in the media and the corrupt media establishment ask you the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question. Go. Mr. Robert. This is how we get our country back. We need accountability because this media rigged the 2016 election. They rigged the 2020 election with a Hunter Biden laptop story. Mr. Ramaswamy, and they're going to rig this election. Your time is up. Accountability. Let me turn to That's Governor, Governor Christie. Country. Why are you? Vivek went nuclear, swinging hard and not holding back. He took all the oxygen out of the room and everyone was left catching their breath. I don't think I've witnessed any debate beat down like that. Then the neocons had their turn, sucking up to the military industrial complex. It felt like that dragged on forever. But once again, Vivek had it together. He's all about America first. And as president, he's not interested in sending American troops off to fight in more wars. I would be telling BB, finish the job once and for all with these butchers, Hamas. They're terrorists. They're massacring innocent people. They would wipe every Jew off the globe if they could. It was I said, finish them finish them. And the reason is I worked on this every day when I was at the United Nations. There would be no Hamas without Iran. There would be no Hezbollah without Iran. There would not be the Houthis without Iran. And there wouldn't be the Iranian militias in Syria and Iraq that are trying to hear, hit our military men and women if it hadn't been for Iran. And who is funding Iran right now? China is buying oil from Iran. Russia is getting drones and missiles from Iran. And there is an unholy alliance. So what I would tell Bibi is that Israel has the right and the responsibility to defend itself. I would tell him to smoke those terrorists on his southern border, and then I'll tell him as president of the United States, I'll be smoking the terrorists on our southern border. That's his responsibility. This is our responsibility. That's how we move forward. But I want to be careful to avoid making the mistakes from the neocon establishment of the past. Corrupt politicians in both parties spent trillions, killed millions, made billions for themselves in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, fighting wars that sent thousands of our sons and daughters, people my age, to die in wars that did not advance anyone's interests, adding $7 trillion to our national debt. And Joe Biden sold off our foreign policy. Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, got a $5 million bribe from Ukraine. That's why we're sending $200 billion back to that same country. The fact of the matter is the Republican Party is not that much better. You have the likes of Nikki Haley, who stepped down from her time at the UN. Bankrupt or in debt is, was her family. 
Then she becomes a military contractor. She joins the board of Boeing and otherwise, and is now a multimillionaire. So I think that that's wrong when Republicans do it or Democrats do it. That's the choice we face. Do you want a leader from a different generation who's going to put this country first, or do you want Dick Cheney in three-inch heels? All right, Mr. In which case, we've got two of them on stage Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. I like how Vivek broke that down. He said Bibby's got his own stuff to handle, and the southern border, well, that's on us. He didn't hold back calling out the neocons for blowing billions and offing millions of troops in those never-ending wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Then he throws shade on Nikki Haley, pointing out how she went from being broke after leaving the UN to becoming a multimillionaire after jumping on the military contractor and Boeing board train. And man, she didn't look too thrilled for a multimillionaire. Next up, the comedian in cargo pants, President Zelensky and the Ukraine mess. The vague sprinkles a little I told you so and serves up a few extra facts for the neocons to gag on. Mr. Ramaswamy, are you persuaded by President Zelensky's urgent new plea? Where do you stand on more funding? I'm absolutely unpersuaded. And I'm actually enjoying watching the Ukraine hawks quietly, delicately tiptoe back from their position as this thing has unwound into a disaster. The first half of this race, I was the only person standing for it. Now they're actually quietly coming around to being more cautious as they should. Level with the American people here. Ukraine is not a paragon of democracy. This is a country that has banned 11 opposition parties. It has consolidated all media into one state TV media arm. That's not democratic. It has threatened not to hold elections this year unless the U.S. forks over more money. That is not democratic. It has celebrated a Nazi in its ranks, the comedian in cargo pants, a man called Zelensky, doing it in their own ranks. That is not democratic. More facts for you that you won't hear from the mainstream in either party or the mainstream media. The regions of Ukraine that are occupied by Russia right now in the Donbass, Luhansk, Donetsk, these are Russian-speaking regions that have not even been part of Ukraine since 2014, that other people probably couldn't name those provinces for you. Those are the hard facts. And so to frame this as some kind of battle between good versus evil, don't buy it. And I'd like the likes of the, the sharpest of the war hawks on Ukraine, Nikki Haley, to have some accountability and answer. Do you want to use U.S. taxpayer money to fund the banning of Christians? That is actually what's happening. They're using the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. They have banned them. The Ukrainian parliament just did this last week, supported by our dollars. And I think you owe it to the American people, Nikki, to at least this Mr. one time Ramaswamy, at least condemn, thank you. That's time. At least Mr. condemn Ramaswamy, their thank banning you. of Christians. Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. Out of both sides Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. I am telling you, Putin and President Xi are salivating at the thought that someone like that could become president. They would love to the see The fact that. of the matter is she doesn't answer so the question. So this is what I will tell you. We're driving is, Russia all, into China. Mr. Ramaswamy, you had your time policies. to talk. The ambassador has the floor. We all remember what that thug did when he invaded Ukraine. We all know that half a million people have died because of Putin. And here is a freedom-loving, pro-American country that is fighting for its survival and its democracy. Well, there goes democracy out the window. Zelensky's on a banning spree, shutting down 11 opposition parties, and now there's only one state media left. Plus, He's throwing US dollars at banning Christians. And guess who's caught in the crossfire again? None other than Nikki Haley. Look at her face. She looks like a little girl who's been caught with her hand in the cookie jar. Now onto the TikTok drama. Nikki's trying to dodge the shots, but Vivek is a sniper on duty doing overtime. And let me tell you, the gloves are about to come off. Nikki's going full Will Smith mode on Vivek. It's getting spicy. Well, I, I, I want to laugh at why Nikki Haley didn't answer your question, which is about looking at families in the eye. In the last debate, she made fun of me for actually joining TikTok while her own daughter was actually using the app for a long time. So you might want to take care of your family first. Leave my daughter out of your else, voice. Your adult daughter. The next generation of Americans are using it. And that's actually the point. You have her supporters propping her up. That's fine. Here's the truth. You're just the scum. easy answer is actually to say that we're just going to ban one app. We got to go further. We have to ban any U.S. company actually transferring U.S. data to the Chinese. Here's a story most people don't know. Airbnb hands over U.S. user data to the CCP. Now, that's a U.S.-owned company. So this is the problem when you have Republicans that temporarily go the way the winds blow, and now it's popular to talk tough on China when she was U.N. ambassador, called them literally her words, not my, our great friend. You can't be fair-weather fans of the right policy. Get to the root cause. Even U.S. companies in Silicon Valley are regularly doing it. 
cut the virtue signaling. The fact of the matter is Democrats are on TikTok today. The only person, one of the few people who is putting up content the way the actual algorithms work, speaking for pro-Israel views or others, Ambassador and Haley, um, more Republicans will join it. But uh, stop U.S. companies from turning over data to Chinese companies. That's the real answer. Like, uh, the Christian, signal. don't get to respond to personal attacks, but you do. Thank you very much. You know, when he talks about me praising China, he doesn't know the fact that the reason China was praised was because I negotiated with China and Russia the largest set of sanctions against North Korea in a generation. We are the, that is literally the reason North Korea stopped testing ballistic missiles. So I said China did good on their part. That was a negotiation you, said they were you could never do. what you said, Nikki. Those are your words, not mine. And so just when, own up to you it. You would never you can have change been able your to mind. get That's that allowed. negotiation done. But don't done. lie to the people about what you've said or what you've done in China, South Carolina. My entire you have brought them to South Carolina. Ron is right Nations. about that. Every day I fought China. And I did it Look at the by making sure no one she could get any country. agency heads in UN. I did it by making sure that we called them out on human rights. I did it by making sure that we held them accountable on everything that they did. That's the reason we got out of the Human Rights Council. That's the reason we I, called them out. And I have, there's not been a day I haven't Nikki stopped. Nikki Scott, was it is your turn. Mr. Ron the millions you made afterwards. Check out these two going at it round after round. Nikki might be second guessing taking on Vivek in that second debate because Vivek's brought receipts. Finally diving into domestic politics and the economy, Vivek lays out a crystal clear plan to rescue the American dream from Joe Biden's economic nightmare. Increase the supply of energy. That brings down the cost of energy, grows the economy. Drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear. Increase the supply of labor in this country. Stop using our taxpayer money to pay people more to stay at home instead of to go to work. Increase the supply of housing. People don't talk about this one in the Republican Party. The land use restrictions are constricting the supply of housing. That's making housing more expensive for ordinary Americans across this country. So that's the true answer. And I think it takes a CEO in the White House who actually understands this to get this done. Because Americans at home, they know the Bidenomics is a lie. Prices are going up. Interest rates and mortgages to buy your home are going up. But wages have remained flat. That's the hard diagnosis for our economy. And this is about more than just our economy. I say this as a member of my generation. I'm 38 years old. I'm the youngest person ever to run for US president as a Republican. The reason my generation has lost our sense of national pride in part is because people in my generation feel like the American dream isn't available to them. And part of the reason why is we've burdened them with four-year college degrees that did not serve their head start on the American dream. People will be more proud of a country if we're all making more money in that country this is how we revive national pride and our identity, and it will take a CEO in the White House with zero-based budgeting, by the way, to take Mr. on the federal Ramos debt Swami, to get you. this job done. Now let's talk about the border, a topic that doesn't get enough spotlight. At least three GOP candidates on stage agree that there's a crucial need to secure the border and halt illegal migration and address the serious issues like the fentanyl crisis causing tens of thousands of American deaths per year. I'll build a wall, but we are going to designate the cartels to be foreign terrorist organizations or something similar to that. And we're going to authorize the use of deadly force. We're going to have maritime operations to interdict precursor chemicals going into Mexico. But I'll tell you this, if someone in the drug cartels is sneaking fentanyl across the border when I'm president, that's going to be the last thing they do. We're going to shoot them stone cold dead. Ambassador Haley. I don't care what my colleagues at the United Nations think. What I'll tell you is... We have lost more Americans than the Vietnam, Afghan, Afghanistan, and Iraq wars combined. We lost 75,000 Americans last year. Go to the source. It is the reason why we'll continue to say we will end all normal trade relations with China until they stop murdering Americans. You watch how quick that flow stops. The second thing is we'll send special operations in to take out the cartels. We need to go to where they're distributing it, where the supply centers are, and take them out. We'll put 20 5,000 more Border Patrol and ICE agents on the ground and let them do their job. We will defund sanctuary cities. We will go back to the Remain in Mexico policy so that everybody stays in Mexico and they never get here in the first place. And instead of catch and deport, we'll go to catch and release. I'm sorry, instead of catch and release, we'll go to catch and deport. That is the way we'll deal with the border. Yes. You know, like Ron, I've actually met many parents across this country who have lost their kids to laced pharmaceuticals that have fentanyl in them. The right. only thing I would ask, Ron, I think you'd be on the same page with me on this. Let's not even call that an overdose. Right. That is not an overdose. That is poisoning. 
If you put that fentanyl in a Big Mac, we would not call that an overdose. You'd call it what it is. It's closer to bioterrorism. And I say that because as it uniquely relates to this crisis, that does warrant more aggressive means to deal with it. So there's a new presidential election in Mexico in 2024. People may not be aware of that. It's going to be someone other than Obrador, who has been a disaster in Mexico. I think he's even mentioned me obliquely in speeches to say that somebody who would do this shouldn't get anywhere near the White House. Well, AMLO, get out of the way. There's going to be someone else in charge. I hope to build a good relationship with that next president of Mexico. We'll use our own military to seal our own southern border. What we need to do is stop using our military to protect somebody else's border halfway around the world when we're short right here at home. Get serious about protecting this border. And then the other thing that hasn't been discussed is the northern border. I'm the only candidate on the stage, as far as I'm aware, who has actually visited the northern border. There was enough fentanyl that was captured just on the northern border last year to kill three million Americans. So we got to just skate to where the puck is going, not just where the puck is. Don't just build the wall, build both walls. Can't just complete the wall, use the military to seal the Swiss cheese for the tunnels that they're actually building underneath that wall. So that wraps up a super interesting debate. Vivek stole the show. The others were like mm, taking a sleeping tablet. Hard to keep your eyes open. In my opinion, Vivek takes the cake by a long shot. De Sanctimonious follows and Nikki Haley trailed in third. The other two, well, they may as well have stayed at home. Senator Scott's got great intentions and seems like a really nice guy, but Krispy Kreme was a bit flat tonight. It seems like without a little Trump derangement syndrome in his talking points, he's not bringing much to the table. But that's just my take. What's yours? Who won and who got done? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.